here's our super quick introduction to the microservices playground that we've created uh, that you guys can then use to explore microservices principles and practices. So right, what we have right here is the Red Hat Microservices uh, organization up out here on GitHub. I have a number of different projects you can see here, different repositories. The one with all the documentation is Hello World MSA. So you would want to look at that documentation and follow it closely. There's a lot going on here, and I'll just look at the latest HTML preview. And you can see there's a number of steps involved, including this thing called prepare the CDK, install the CDK. The CDK stands for Container Development Kit. You get that from uh, developers.red.com slash product CDK, and then look at docs and APIs. You'll want to download this, uh, which gives you both a zip file and a box file, a vagrant box file. But then you need to look at this installation guide and a getting started guide and go through those steps accordingly. Uh, there's a lot involved because it is a whole cloud environment running here on your laptop. Just to kind of make that point a little bit more, I'll come over here to my, uh, just you can see what's on my hard drive here. I have the box file, which I did a Vagrant box add on already. And then of course there's a CDK uh, zip file that I've unzipped. And then I've installed these plugins over here in the plugins directory. And then if you come over here to where it says RHEL, RHEL OSE, which stands for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, OpenShift Enterprise, there's the Vagrant file that we used. Uh, so on that Vagrant file, I did a Vagrant up but I did make some tweaks to basically give it more memory. And uh, so if I look at my virtual box instance here, you can see that I'm running with seven gigs of RAM. And that is probably just not quite enough. Eight gigs is gonna give you more headroom. I'm running with seven, because I've run it many, many times. Uh, we'll work to reduce the overhead at some point in the future. Because this demo actually has a lot of functionality in it. So right here you can see that it actually has, let me zoom in over here, a endpoint that has enterprise application platform, the JBoss application server, and that's a JAXRS endpoint. It has Wildfly Swarm, so Wildfly Swarm is the embeddable technology, uh, works just like Drop Wizard or Spring Boot that allows you to do Java EE, uh, Java EE kind of APIs like JAXRS, but it's a lightweight embeddable technology. Then we have Bonjour as a Node.js endpoint, Aloha as a Vertex endpoint, Ola as a Spring Boot endpoint, so that's your Spring Boot embeddable Tomcat in that case, Vanilla Spring Boot, nothing unusual there, and then Drop Wizard. So Drop Wizard is kind of where a lot of these ideas came from when it came to building lightweight endpoints. These are all REST endpoints that the browser can interact with directly, and we actually do have an example of that where we use the browser uh, to interact with those guys directly. If I look over here at the browser code, it's very, very straightforward. You can see right here is just the URLs, uh, the URL invocations. So API Hola, API Bonjour, API Hello, uh, those are the different endpoints that are out there. So it should be noted that all of these microservices run as individual pods. Uh, you can see them all over here. So these are Linux containers, Docker containers, running as pods within Kubernetes. Uh, and then our OpenShift is our supported version of that Docker Kubernetes backbone. And so this is the OpenShift web console, but you can see there's a lot running here. So that's why it takes so much memory. We have all these individual components that are part of the overall system running here, including the Hystrix capability and Zipkin capability, they're all running, and that allows the system to actually work. So it's important to note that this system is a, co a, a collaboration of numerous services all coming together. And the reason we did Hello World was so you could focus on the mechanics, the actual invocations and the component parts of it. You could do much more business logic than just Hello World, but the idea here is that you need to actually see these pieces working together and understand how they come together. So, for instance, the Hystrix component of this is very critical. The idea that you won't have cascading failures should one of these components in the system uh, fail. As an example here, let's look at the chaining example. Uh, so, like, let's say Bonjour fails. Does that mean Aloha fails, and Ola fails, and Ola fails, and Namaste fails, and Hello fails? So you don't want a cascading failure to roll up your chain and, of course, blow up in the browser. Uh, that would be pretty horrible for your users. Uh, maybe to make that point a little bit more crisply, though, I'll come over here to my web console, and let's take Bonjour down to zero as an example. So we'll take Bonjour down to zero, and so that means it's not running anymore, and you can see there's the error message showing up there in the browser. So, and, so that's a pretty good example of where with basic JavaScript, go back to the code over here, with the basic JavaScript just simply doing an Ajax invocation, it's just getting an error message, error getting value from service, error getting value from service, and that's the name of the service right there. So you know, your JavaScript programmer is now responsible for dealing with that failure, and then they'd have to do something accordingly. In the case of using Hystrix, however, if I come over here, watch what happens if I say refresh results. Notice it says fallback there. That's the fallback handler that, you know, with the Hystrix API you get. We're using Hystrix and Fane for that. If I come over here to my Hystrix monitor, 
And it sees sort. There we go. Watch the bonjour there. Move this over a little bit. So if I come over here and hit refresh, refresh, there should be two timeouts. So you can see the orange right there, two timeouts. And refresh, and refresh. And now we set this to five. So if you actually hit it pretty hard, one, two, three, four, five, kick it over, it should go open. So based on <laughs> the scaling of this user interface, it doesn't actually say open there like it should. Um, but that basically means the circuit is open and you can notice there's so many short-circuited requests. So if I come up here and pound on it some more, see the number of short circuit requests right here. So five. So basically what's happening is it's responding quickly because it's bouncing off Bonjour, which is dead. If I come over here now and roll Bonjour back up to one, and it does take a second to bring that uh, Docker image. So this is a Docker image being, being brought back to life. So think of it as a Docker run. And again, Kubernetes is managing that based on the replication controller. Um, but let me see when it gets back up. Yeah, okay, now it's back up. All right, there we go. So now we get that request, and you can see it should go closed. There it is, back to closed. And now we have green results. So if I click the button here, you can see we have nice green results from the Bonjour uh, microservice as an example. So this gives you an example. This gives you an environment to play with the Hystrix, uh, you know, roll these things up and back. Uh, so these are basically in Kubernetes pods. They're Docker containers. If I want to come over here and scale it up to two, I can then actually watch it do the load balancing. Uh, so it actually has a uh, health check built into this now. So it's actually going to wait to tell us that two are available once, once uh, the two pass the health check, as an example. And I can even take it to three. Let's see if it'll go up to three for me here. I am getting some warnings. I'm not sure why. Let's, let's drill down on it. Okay. And it looks like they're coming to life. Maybe you had a warning on one. Let's go back over here and load that main screen. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, it says three now. And let's go to browser as a client. So remember we had that failed message before, refresh. And if you watch closely, what we're doing is we're displaying the host name. So each piece of code thinks it's running on a different host. So it's doing random load balancing. You get the for free with Kubernetes. So you can kind of watch it do its load balancing there. Uh, and then you can also do updates to it and do rolling upgrades, you know, if you wanted to. Maybe another example of that that's in this code base. Here, if I go back to API Gateway, I can make a change to that piece of code. Let's go over here to, let's call it Raphael. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm just making a change to the API Gateway Controller. This is again using Hystrix and Fane. I'm going to hit save here, and I'm going to just do the build from my command line. So let's do a Maven package. So it's going to do a Maven build of that endpoint. Um, and this is actually a Spring Boot little application here. So you'll see it produce in the target directory the actual fat jar, or uber jar, as we like to call it. And then I'm going to do a, uh, where's my start build? We're going to do a start build. So the OC start build basically is the take that Uber jar and roll it up into our Docker container. There's the Docker file over here. It's very straightforward, very simple Docker file. Okay, so grab that jar file and do the Docker build on it. And as it goes to its Docker build, uh, it'll then push it out to the runtime environment that I'm running here inside this virtual machine, inside of VirtualBox. Let's go back over here. And you should see it go, you can see it's now deploying. It's doing its rolling upgrade of that API gateway. In this case, I have a blue. This is the blue, and I also have the green. So like a blue-green deployment, we have a copy of both systems or both components in production. And then now that blue is up and running. Let's go back to our main user interface over here. Okay. Um, it's actually very, very straightforward. So we're still pointing at green or the original one. Let me come back, and let's do the patch the route. There's a simple command for that, I already have loaded. And we're gonna tell the route. Okay, watch what happens in our user interface here. All right, you're gonna see it, this route pop from that service, API Gateway, to this service, API Gateway Blue. And there it goes. And now if I can get, if I click the right buttons here in the browser. There we go, now it says Raphael in this case. So if I decide I don't want that change, right? If I wanna roll it back, the previous pods are still sitting out here. All right, they're still sitting there waiting for traffic, though the route is pointing to the new one. I can come in here and say I want to go back. That's an example. And then if I, you can see if I get that refreshed correctly, there we go. Now Raphael is gone. So that concept of a blue-green deployment is something else you can experiment, the rolling upgrades you can experiment with. And again, you can see the chaining examples. And we'd invite you to explore the, you know, pieces of code that are out here. So you can see Hystrix in action. Oh, and I should mention there is Zipkin in this guy as well. Uh, let me move this over here, find traces. 
So Zip, uh, Zipkin is allowing you to trace through the system. You can see in this case, during the chaining example, we have hello, namaste, hola, hola. And then you can kind of look at the timing of each. So primarily what we're doing is tracking the timing of each invocation. What does it take to go, you know, call from A to B to C to D? So that's basically what's happening here in this piece of code. Again, keep in mind, it's, um, the documentation is all out here in this repo. I'll back back up so you can kind of see what that is. And each of these is an individual repository. Each of these is independently deployable. That's a key element of microservices, that each of these is an independent individual thing built with the technology we felt was best for it at the time. Uh, so if I want to build one in Ruby and one in PHP and one in Python, that's another benefit of microservices architecture. You build it with the technology to make sense for that microservice. And then one thing I'm going to call your attention to is in order to make the point of why invoking services from each other is tricky, uh, this Goodbye project helps you deal with that. It, it really helps you understand the circuit breaker pattern and why we use Hystrix for that. Um, if in fact you're not, you know, you're second guessing why Hystrix is in there. So give that a try. If you have any feedback, find us on Twitter or, you know, again, check out developers.red.com for actually downloading the, the CDK and the technologies you saw here today. Thank you very much.